Hey guys, Rampage here, bringing you another quick DCS tutorial. So I'm in the Mirage here again today, and I've just set up head tracking. I don't have a track IR. I'm using a software called Open Track with AI Track. Uh, these are both available on uh, for free. Uh, let me just show you what the window looks like. So you can see me here now. It's not perfect. You can see it doesn't always pick up. If I lean back, it makes it a little bit better. There we go. So it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good a job. As you can see, it picks up head movements pretty well, pretty consistently. And I can use it to look around the cockpit. Um, I still have a keybind for zoom. You see here, I still have to zoom in with the mouse zoom, but I can get a pretty good uh, view of what's going on in the cockpit. Oh, it's a little jumpy. I haven't uh, tuned all the settings perfectly, um, but so far it's been pretty good. Yeah. So let me show you how to get it up and running. Uh, first of all, a uh, big shout out to Ravius, I think that's how you pronounce his name, on Reddit. Uh, I found his post and that's where I got uh, the idea. Uh, then here's the GitHub page for AI Track. I'll post a link in the description. Um, so first thing you'll need to download uh, C++ redistributable. Probably you already have it. Um, so just double check you do. You need to download Open Track and AI Track. So both of them you can get off GitHub. I'll post the download links in the description. Uh, just make sure you download the latest release. Um, yeah, you can just click on the link in the README and it will take you to the release page to download both. Uh, then for Open Track to get it set up, let me pull it up. So this is what Open Track looks like once you've installed it and got it up and running. Uh, just mm -hmm. one thing to note for both Open Track and AI Track, you should install them and run them as an administrator. Uh, also, if you have uh, Windows UAC or file, uh, sorry, folder protection turned on then you'll need to switch those, not either switch those off or allow the app through. So you will need to do one of those two for it to run. Okay, but back to this. So this is in Open Track. Then as you can see, it's got a little octopus, pretty cool. And then AI Track will look like this. Okay, you can see me there an AI Track. So with AI track, you can start and stop tracking. So I click this button, then it stops tracking. This button starts tracking. And you can see when it's picking up your face, it'll show these pink dots. Kind of makes you look like you're out of a cyborg movie. Um, and then in configuration, it will let you choose some settings. Um, the main one to do is the distance from your camera. So to get the app to work correctly, you do need to be at the right distance from your camera. So for my webcam, it doesn't work very well if I'm up close. As you can see, if I come really close, then it will stop picking up the dots. Uh, but if I'm further away, it seems to work fine. Then also in the configuration, you can change that distance. I don't know if it works for all webcams or not. Um, but yeah, the main thing is to change the distance and there's also an option to change how fast it can spin left and right. Uh, that one is called uh, changing it between light, medium and heavy uh, tracking. Okay, but uh, let's take a look first at the AI track. So for AI track, make this a little bigger. Oopsie. Let's pull up this one here. For AI track, to get it set up, firstly, we, you'll need to set input and output. Okay, 
So input needs to be set to UDP over network, output set to free track, filter, uh, I can just leave that on A, C, C, E, L, A, Excella. Um, and then if you want to set different profiles for different planes or for different games, you can do that here on the profile uh, uh, option. So keep in mind with the profile, um, let's say you're in your Mirage. If you want to tune it so that maybe you have a dead zone for your HUD or some other important controls or, you know, just a, a smaller window so that if you're looking around, it doesn't quickly jump past what you want to look at. You can set that all up in the profile, but then that would be specific to your one jet. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look actually at that one. So if you click this button mapping here, that'll take you to this screen over here. Okay, so this one is where you map your axis. So this is for looking left, right, up, down, and also for rolling your head. Uh, let me go ahead and show you rolling in case you missed it earlier. So rolling is uh, twisting your head. So like this, Ooh, okay, that's quite a lot, but twisting your head like this, right? Okay, uh, let's jump back to it. So for all of them, your pitch and roll, you'll want to tune them to your webcam. And it's also going to probably differ by your plane cockpit as well. Uh, for my webcam, I found most of the settings work pretty well set to a max input of about 30 degrees. And then tuning it with a slight curve axis like this so that the smaller head movements don't swing your head too fast. Um, you'll definitely want to play with this and get it uh, the way you think feels more natural. Um, best way to do it is just to open DCS in windowed mode or uh, borderless windowed mode and then have the um, open track open and then you can adjust the mappings and uh, uh, just switch between the two to make sure that it looks okay in game. Um, yeah, but your pitch roll you'll want to change. Uh, X, Y, Z, I haven't played with yet. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it will change if you change both. I've just changed your pitch and roll, and so far it looks pretty good. Um, okay, so what is the other thing I want to show you? Uh, I think we can go ahead and jump into the game again to take a look. Okay, so looking at the in-game, yeah, you can see I can look around pretty easily. Let's go ahead and bring up the mapping as well so you can see that. Uh, whoops, not that one. Let me get the right one. There we go. Okay. So, if you have the map open here, you can see there the red dot moving as I look. So, this is all adjustable. You can, um, let's say, uh, let me move this around a bit. Okay, so if I adjust this more towards the end, then you can see then when I move my head, uh, it will move very little for most of the uh, most of the detected axis and then a lot you can see it'll jump very quickly towards the end so I don't quite like that um, I like having just a little bit of room uh, just a little bit of room I guess you could say not quite dead zone but a slower curve at the, at the start and then a linear curve at the end I found this works the best for me Okay, so there you can see your, I need to move back a little bit for you to see it more smoothly. So yeah, like I said with my camera, if I sit too close to the camera, it doesn't work very well. Pitch, 
So this will let me go up and down. You might want to use asymmetric mapping for this. So this will basically let you set the two axes independently for up and down. Because obviously for down you don't need to uh, use as much to get to the bottom. So you might want to play around with this. Uh, I haven't quite set it yet, but maybe uh, something like that would probably be good. So this one is just a, a ramp and then a flat curve. So once you've looked down, you don't have any further to go, right? So it's just, you only need about that much room to play with. Um, but yeah, for the top, this feels actually a little bit uh, not smooth enough. Oh, my plane is running out of fuel. Let's uh, get rid of those audio warnings. Okay. I need to look under there a little bit. Oh, I definitely still need to get used to this. Okay. And uh, so it doesn't help that I just adjusted the sensitivity. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. So yeah, the mapping. I was about to make a little more. I think that's good, just a little bit more sensitive for the vertical. Um, and then roll. This is for twisting your head. Uh, you might not like this, so you might want to disable it. Up to you. Um, I've left it on. I think it's useful. And then X, Y, and Z I've left at the default. I don't know what exactly happens if you change it. Uh, seems to be a similar deal. I don't exactly know what's the difference between mapping it between your pitch and roll and X, Y, and Z, so I've just left these as default. Uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it. That's pretty much it, so yeah, I haven't uh, perfectly tuned it. Um, another thing that you can play around with is if you want to use uh, let's say on the your axis let's say your HUD or some kind of control on your cockpit uh, is over here and you want to see it you can set a little dead zone okay uh, let's see if I can do it now without messing it up okay there we go kind of see a little weirdly shaped dead zone that I've got there. So now if I move my head this way, oh, no, not quite. Straighten that out. Okay, so. Okay, that's more of a dead zone. So there you can see if I have something here on the side that I want to see. I can create a little dead zone gap and that will just give me a little bit of wiggle room so that if I move my head it doesn't move the uh, head tracker too much. It just gives you a little notch to work with um, to catch when you're looking left and right which is a little helpful because so far I've found that if you do have it set to a linear curve it's quite difficult sometimes to keep it exactly on, uh, let's say, the radar or something that you're looking at. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for today. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I uh, hope you guys find this useful and see you guys later.